In this video, we are going to create this to-do application using React and Tailwind. If you're a beginner learning React, this is going to be a really good exercise for you. As you can see, we have this input. You can add new to-do items. You can cross them and delete them. I will be explaining every single line of code. So let's get into it. To start the project, I have this empty React project with Tailwind inside. If you don't know how to create one, you can click on the card and watch this video where I create a responsive navigation bar using React and Tailwind. And at the beginning of that video, I create everything from scratch. So you can check it out and come back to this one. I also open this project on the browser so we can see what we are doing. So to start, I will create a background first using this div. Let's set it to minimum age screen. That means we set this div to minimum height 100 VH. So it covers the entire page. Let's make it a flex container so we can center the items inside. Items center and justify center. Let's give it a gradient background to right from blue 600 to emerald 400. Inside this div, we are going to create a container for the to-do list. So this one is going to have a white background, a little drop shadow, and rounded corners, and a padding of 16, which means 4 RAM, 64 pixels. Inside this one, there is going to be a H1 with the text React to-do list. Let's make the text really large, font bold, and center it. Text color is going to be gray 900. And because we are going to have a input and a button right under this H1, let's give it a margin bottom of 6. So right under this H1, we're going to have another div, which is going to have a margin bottom of 4. And we are going to make it a flex container because there is going to be two items inside and we want them to be side by side. It is going to be a input and a button that is going to say add. This input is going to have a placeholder which is going to say add a new to do. Let's also style it. We are going to set this to flex grow. We are going to make it slightly bigger. So px-3 and py2. So px is the horizontal axis. So padding left 0.75 and padding right. And py is for the top and the bottom. So 0.5 padding at the top and the bottom. Let's give it a one pixel border. And it is going to have a rounded corner on the left. So rounded l lg. And when you click on this input, we are going to delete the outline and give it a ring. And the ring is going to be blue color. Let's style the button. We're going to give it background blue 500 and text white. PX is going to be 4 and PY is going to be 2. So one rem of padding on the left and on the right and 0.5 RAM at the top and the bottom. And this one is going to have a rounded corner on the right. So rounded R, L, G. And when you hover over it, the background is going to be blue 600. So this is pretty much it with the basic styling. So right outside this div, but still inside this one, you're gonna have a unordered list. So we can display the to-do items inside. I'm gonna give it space Y2. And this is basically going to create space at the top and the bottom of the to-do elements. But right now, we are going to leave this empty so we can start to create the logic. So to create the logic of this to-do application, we're gonna need use state. Use state is a hook that allows you to add state to a component. And in this case, we are going to use it twice because we need to keep track of to-do elements that you are going to create and delete. 
and also we need to keep track of the inputs that you are going to write down such as the to do elements text so inside this app component we are going to use use state so this first one is going to be to do's and set to do's and it is going to be equal to use state as you can see my vs code automatically imports use state if it doesn't happen for you just type this down and the second one is going to be the input and set input it is going to be equal to use state as well so use state has a array of two elements and the first one is always the current state and the second one is a function that updates the first one in this case we are going to have a array of to do's because we are going to be storing to do elements more than one so this use state is going to have a empty array as its argument and the input is going to be a text so this one is going to have a empty string so the first one is for to store the to do items and the second one is for to store the current input as i said at the beginning of the video if you're a beginner this might be still confusing for you so let me give you a couple of examples let's say we have a couple of to do elements inside this array of to do's and let's say you want to delete one as i said this second one is responsible for updating this one so if you want to update it in any way such as deleting a to do element adding a new one we are going to use this set to do's function to delete or add to do elements from this array and for this one the example would be let's say you put down a to do element using this input element when you type something down we track it by using this set input function and after you add a new to do element by typing down a input and adding it to the existing array of to do's we need to reset the input and to be able to do it we are going to use the set input function to reset the current state so the next thing we are going to do is to create a function to add a new to do element so let's create a add to do function so the first thing we need to do inside this function block is to check if the input you write down is empty or not so we're going to use a if statement and we're going to use this trim method so if the input is not empty we are going to be applying the code block inside this one and it is going to be adding a new to do element into the existing to do array as i mentioned a second ago when we need to update these current states we are going to use these setter functions so in this case we want to add a new to do element into this empty array so that means we need to use the set to do's function inside the set to do's function i will open up a set of curly braces and using the spread operator i will create a copy of the existing to do elements and add the new one the new one needs to have a unique identifier and in this case we are going to use date.now method this basically creates a timestamp which is going to be unique every time you create it the text is going to be the input you write down and by default the to do elements are going to be not completed so completed false and after you add a new to do element as i mentioned a second ago we need to reset the input back to empty so basically we need to update this current state and to update the current state just like we do by using set to do's function to update the to do's array we will use set input and set it to empty string so before we move along let's go over this one more time we have created a function named add to do first thing it does is to check if the input you write down is empty or not and if it's not empty it is going to execute this code inside this block of code to add a new to do element into this array first we spread the existing one 
without modifying the original one. That is why we used spread operator. It basically creates a copy of the original one. So we don't alter with the original. After we spread the existing array, we add the new one, which has a unique ID, the text as your input, and it is not completed by default. And after you successfully add the new to do element to the array, we reset the input element to empty string. Next, we are going to put this function inside this button. I will use the onClick event handler. And inside, we are going to put the add to do. So each time you click on this button, we are going to be calling this function. Also, inside this input, we are going to set the value to input, which is the current state. And as you type down, we are going to update the state using on change. It is going to take the event itself as the argument. And using the set input setter function, we are going to target what you write inside the input. So we store the current state. And as you type down, we update the current state with whatever you write. So finally, inside this unordered list, we are going to open up a set of curly braces and we are going to map over the to do's array. And for every to do item, we are going to create a list item. So when you use the map function, the element that you are going to create needs to have a key. I will use to do.id as the key. And the reason why we do this because React wants to uniquely identify each of these elements by using a key, which in this case we used a unique ID, which is to do.id, the current timestamp. And it is going to be unique every time you create a new to do element. Let's also style the list item. We are going to have an input and a span inside this list element. So let's make it a flex container and center the items. Let's give it a padding of three rounded corners. Background is going to be slate 100, one pixel border, and the border is going to be gray 200. So inside the list, let's create a checkbox. And this checkbox is going to be set to checked to do dot completed because all the to do elements are not completed by default. So they are not going to be checked. And to be able to check them, we are going to use on change. And again, to update the state, we are going to use set to do's. And inside the set to do's function, we are going to map over the to do array. We are going to take the to do elements as the arguments. We need to understand which to do element you check. And to do it, we are going to match the IDs. So if this to do elements ID is matching to any ID inside the to do array, we are going to spread the existing array. And we are going to set the completed to reverse of what it is. Otherwise, we are going to keep displaying the to do element. I know this looks really complicated, but it's actually really simple. When you check a to do element to be able to understand which one you checked, we try to match the IDs inside the to do's array because every single item has a unique ID. And once we find which one you checked, we set the completed to opposite. So if it's not completed, when you check it, it becomes completed. And if it's completed, it turns into not completed. Otherwise, if you don't match the IDs, so if you're not checking anything, we just keep displaying the to do item as is. Also, let's not forget to style this input as well. We're going to give it a margin right of two, height of five and width of five. The text is going to be blue 600. So right under this input, we are going to create a span element, which is going to display the text inside the to do element. 
So basically we are displaying whatever you write for your to-do element. Let's style this. So for the styling, we're going to open up a set of curly braces and use backticks because there's going to be some logic inside this styling. I will set it to flex grow and using the dollar sign and curly braces if it's completed. The text is going to have the text decoration of line through, which is going to indicate that you checked this to do and we are going to make the text color a little lighter. And if it's not checked, we are going to give it a text of gray 800. And finally, right under this span, we are going to create the final element, which is going to be another button. This one is going to be the delete button using the onClick event handler. We will use the set to do's setter function to delete a to do element. We are not actually going to delete an element, but we are going to filter the current array and we are going to display a copy of it without the one you deleted. So on the to do's array, we are going to use the filter method and it is going to take the to do element as the argument. And if this current to do elements ID doesn't match with any of the IDs inside, the current to do array, we create a new array without this matching one. And this is the way to delete a to do element. Let's also style this button. Margin left two, gonna delete the border, give it a padding of two and rounded corners. Background is going to be red 500, text white, and when you hover over it, the background red is going to B600. So I just realized I made a mistake. I used curly braces for the map function. This should be a normal parentheses. And also here I did the same mistake again. This is going to be a normal parentheses. And also this should be to do's, not to do because we are mapping over the to-do array. So let's create a new to-do element. And there you go. Let's see if we can check it. We can check it. Also, this delete button's hover doesn't work because there is a typo. Let's see if the delete function is working fine. And there you go. It works well. So this is how we can create this to-do list application using React and Tailwind. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for your time and I will see you next time.